Hello, good evening, everyone. I hope I am audible. I welcome you all to the GRE Preparation Made Easy Quantitative Reasoning Class Data by Mrs. Annapurna Murugan. Here are a few instructions for the participants. Make sure you have a stable internet connection and noise free environment. We recommend you to use your earphones for best experience. Also, please respect and instruct and your classmates. Don't write anything inappropriate on the chat box. Also, how to answer the polls, you have to click on the more button where you will find activities and then you can go for polls. Also, we have three packages that is bronze, silver and gold. We are currently providing with a with a coupon code uh, and you can update from basic to bronze in free. And I've already shared the coupon code to you guys and it's for a limited time. So you can upgrade. Also, if you upgrade to silver and gold, you'll get extra benefits like evaluated mock tests, expert university recommendations, dedicated counsel for the entire application and so on. Also, we provide free profile evaluation with our experts. It includes comprehensive evaluation, university shortlisting, course recommendation, recommendation reports, and doubt clearance. We also have live IELTS classes Monday to Friday, 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. And Duolingo classes Monday to Friday, 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Uh, you can register for free. Also, we provide one-on-one -on -one IELTS classes. One-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, IELTS classes. For it, it comes under gold package for rupees five triple nine, and we have extra benefits you can see here. Here are a few achievements. This is the UboGrad website. You can select the country, course, and specialization here. When you go and explore, we have countries, universities, courses, and exams. You can get all the information from here. When you go on solution, we have free profile evaluation. Talk to the council country recommendations, test preparation stores, additional services are provided. Also, weekly blogs are uploaded. You may go through them. Also, when you click here on free profile evaluation, you can yeah, you can book an export slot for free and you will get extra benefits from here. You can go through this. Also, when you click on my test preparation here and click on GRE view course. You get the daily recordings and handouts. So in case you've missed any sessions, you can go through the handouts and uh, recordings. I'll also be sharing the link at the end of the class. Also, in case you guys have any doubt related to the UberGrad website, you can ask in the end of the session. Thank you and have a great session. Hi, guys. Good evening. I hope everyone is doing good. Yes, today we welcome you to our uh, di section uh, but before going to di sections we'll be working on averages mixtures and allegations so and accordingly so post that we'll be discussing mode median so all of these things so and then we'll be working on uh, different types of uh, di questions that means di is not just based on the statistical information but it will be based on your bar graph pie chart so you have to evaluate basically what what happens on this uh, di data uh, this one interpretation or data uh, this one uh, interpretation questions miss basically they will be giving you the data in different forms and how do you evaluate whatever they ask so that is tested here so therefore what is that so you people need to know what are the different datas that you are going to get and what are the key things that they could ask on the that also you should uh, be uh, this one what is that you should uh, know and along with this you should also know that so we'll be having simple calculations okay so for the di questions will be sim uh, will be having simple except for your mean mode and uh, uh, this one what is that uh, median thing so the rest of the things will be very simple here okay so now let me start off with averages so allegations and mixtures because these play crucial role in our uh, under our di or semi di questions okay i'm going to present the screen for you guys here we go yes guys any doubts any queries you can uh, post at the last because right now i'll be explaining so because of which, uh, like, what is that? Uh, I may not be able to see your questions, OK? And I have logged on through only one device. So therefore, just give me one second, yeah.
Yes, uh, can you guys uh, see the screen? Yes. Yeah. Here we go. So what is this average? When we talk about average, we know that. So basically, we'll be having the uh, this one. What is that? Certain uh, readings we'll be having. And we'll be having how many number of readings that will be there. So basically, if you see about average, average is what sum of, sum of all items in the group divided by number of items in the group okay this is the thing we basically have that means what it is the sum of all the items in the group and then we'll be having what the frequency of the items that is nothing but the number of items in the group so that we call it as our average okay so this is our general average that we have but now on the basis of this average let us see how the average changes when the values of the item goes on or what will whether it will the average will change or whether it will remain same so let us try to check because this though you people will be knowing but when they say that if we modify the if we add on or if we subtract something whether so the average will be same not on on what condition the average remains same on what condition it won't be same all these things let us try to understand okay so let me take the first point so that i would like to tell here if the value of each of the items say we have some values okay so if the value of the first thing that we need to know here is that if the value of the item value of each item okay not this one and i would recommend you people to note down this as well if the value of item each item is raised by is raised or increased or it is increased by the same value same value p then the average also whether the average remains same or what happens whether the average changes then the average now the questions for you guys average of the group whether it will remain same for example i have one two three four five so now this becomes what what is the average general average of this five nine ten and 15 15 by 5 so that is the average is what three why five items we have this is the average now if i start adding the constant six or so let me take a small number one plus two to every number for every number i am adding two okay so what happens to the average now so whether this sum of these things divided by pi whether it will be same or what happens here then the average of the group or the item will also increase it will also increase will also increase by what by p value that means what according to this theory i have added two to each even for average also i'll be adding so therefore three plus two five so now on adding all these things i need to get so adding and dividing by five we need to get our average as five here so three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve twelve sixteen sixteen twenty twenty five so twenty five by five if you see you get the average as five 
see rather than adding see if we have 50 terms do you think for 50 terms if they have added for each of the term five so do you think like you will again add do and the thing you can say if the average is some 10 so then 10 plus 5 it will become so 15 15 will become the average that means what does this imply if the value of each item is raised or increased by the same value remember but if you think like you for one we have added with three for two we have added with one three we have added with zero four we have added with five so five we have added with seven do you think this rule applies here no right it will not apply why because the entire number because there is no uniformity in the addition if there is no uniformity definitely what whatever the average that we are going to get that varies there okay so that varies so hence so this will not apply if we uh, add unequal quantities to the elements present in the uh, this one what is that list of statistics so this is our first thing that you people need to remember next thing if the value if the value of each item if the value of each item is decreased decreased by the same value p even what happens from the previous example, you people will be knowing even the overall average also will decrease by P only. Okay. So, decreased by P, then the average of the group of the group or items will also decrease by P decreased by p for example that's what i, I said one two three four five divided by five how much we had got so we saw it will be 15 by five so three was our this one now if i take out okay so one from because we are decreasing if i take one from this what happens this will become zero one two three and four divided by five items the number of items same only in their values we have that constant change okay so that means seven eight nine ten so ten by five so you can see two and even if you say without doing if you knew this property yes so you can say if each of the item is negated by one so what happens even our average also will get so subtracted by one which is nothing but two here yeah. why to do this thing so you people can do straight away without any formulas isn't it because many times for comparisons it will come so therefore what is that it's always better to have the theory so that uh, you will not be using long time to crack the thing. Okay. Then the third, this one that we have here is what? If the value, if the value of each item, each item is multiplied, multiplied by the same value by some value p some value p mm -hmm. then the average also will be multiplied by that average also will be multiplied multiplied by p okay so the average also gets multiplied by p so that is the thing we have here. Take it. So same like this. So each of the individual, I guess by now you people know, you multiply with into two, two, into two and two. So, but I'm multiplying with the same element. Remember that is the condition. And you will see that. So your average, whatever is there, that also will get two here. Take it. So that is the thing here. Next, the fourth point is, if the 
value of each item is divided is divided by p then average is also what divided by p okay so then average also gets divided by p so that means any of this four uh, things four operations you do with the same element for every element uh, so of the group so then you will be seeing that so the uh, this one the averages also will be either added multiplied uh, subtracted or divided according to the operations that you choose there okay so this is a simple thing so whenever you people get this question no need to do a lot of hard work by calculating and all simply remember this theory now the average of the group of items will lie between the smallest value in the group and the largest value in the group yes what is this average Average should be less than highest value. Average should be greater than lowest value. This is also one thing that you need to. Many times what happens in our comparisons also, only. Okay. They will give average and they give five. In our previous case, see, we had so three as a average, isn't it? And the series will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We get. Without calculation, we can say that average will be always less than the greater value. But if we have something 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. In this case, so average will be what? Greater than 5. So why? Because the lowest value of this group was 5 and the highest value was 10. So therefore, I can say that average always lies between, so between the greater value and the smaller value. That is, it is greater than lowest value, but less than highest value. Okay, so that's our average that we get here. Okay. So this is what we basically have, but averages also we have. Uh, so average also can be considered as means, okay? But uh, let me discuss average in terms of means, which is nothing but statistical. So later after this, but before that, I would like to discuss about weighted averages. What is this weighted averages? Averages means we know that so whatever we have in the group divided by this one. So, but in this weighted average, what does this weighted average we have? See, uh, when you take that plainly, that particular element, sum of elements and then divide. So there is a difference between them. So for example, if I take 5 kgs of mango per kg being 50 rupees. Okay. So per kg 50. So 5 kgs, I have taken such mangoes. Then if I take 10 kgs of mangoes, so which is 100 rupees, okay, per kg. So now they will be asking me, what is the total amount spent by me on this? What is that? Uh, what is the average amount that I have sent, spent? So on this, uh, uh, so it will be what? What is the total amount spent on uh, our this one? Can I take 50 plus 100 divided by 5 plus 10? So 15 kgs, can I do that? Whether average amount that I spend is 10? No, right? I cannot just take the individual cost. What we need to do here, you need to take the total amount. The total amount only is called as the weighted average. That means the amount that I have spent for 5 kgs of, so mangoes at 50 rupees per kg is what? 5 into 50. This is the total amount for one type of mango. And another type of mango, how much I have spent? So, uh, so 100 rupees per kg. So 10 into 100, okay? So divided by now 15 kgs I have taken, okay? 
it is not two also remember your 5 kgs and your 10 kgs totally 15 kgs i have paid here so therefore 250 plus 1000 divided by 15 so what we have 1250 by 15 we have okay so now you try to uh, divide here 5 threes uh, then uh, 5 twos uh, 5 fives uh, zeros uh. so now can we uh, this one what is that Three, uh, this one eights uh, 24, three three is a uh, point three. So 83.3 rupees is the average weight, weighted average. That means the average amount that we had per kg would be what 83.3. So that means what? So this 83.3, what is the minimum cost? 50. So it is greater than 50, but when you see it is less than. So this is called as weighted averages. You should be very careful, guys. When you are doing weighted averages, you should know what it is, how many terms, what is that, so that you need to equate. Then some of these things will be that, the sum of items there. Don't just randomly, what is that, take these values and present it. No. So what is, what is that they have given? Look at that and then kindly present these particular things here okay and the next thing that i want to speak about so is our mixtures mixtures averages see all these are very what is that mixtures averages so i will not like get into very detail why because uh so they won't be asking derivation everything but why i derive some of the formulas for you guys miss even if you forget the formula at least uh, so by the given things you people can get the things okay so what is this mixture mixture is nothing but we try to mix certain things in uh, say for making alloys we try to mix so we mix the things okay so on the basis of that we have problems on mixtures the first problem is if i have if q1 is the quantity of if q1 is the quantity of one particular item one particular item of quality of quality p1 whatever i explained in the previous case that formula i am writing here so q2 is the quantity quantity of another item other item of quality p2 of quality p2 okay and so if this is the thing of the second item then the quality of the the average quality how do you find the average quality average quality of the mixture is given by what so what is the you can't just take so p1 and into p2 you need to say how much quantity it was taken so therefore q1 into p1 plus q2 into p2 divided by the quantities total quantities q1 plus q2 this is the average quality okay so what is it we can say this will be the average quality uh, quality of the mixture when they are mixed here okay getting it and this continues for many items it is not like only two items we have if we have many uh, mixtures q1 into p1 plus q2 into p2 plus q3 into p3 plus q4 into p4 so like this it is having then so the sum of all these things divided by what so q1 so plus q2 the sum the summation of all these things okay so this is our mixtures so it comes under your weighted averages only okay but now one important thing i'm going to tell now whatever i'll say this is little 
difficult to uh, retain okay so and at the same time these things very much we are going to get here so that means what here we have what is that allegations what we call it as allegations what is this allegation so whenever we are writing the weighted averages if we want to know in what ratio these things should be mixed we have two things right say for example where is that mangoes wala okay allegations let me take the allegations problem you would realize now okay whatever the problem so if i uh, purchased okay so 5 kg mango at 50 rupees 10 kg mango at so 100 rupees now i need to sell this mangoes i'll be mixing up both the mangoes okay and uh, so i need to sell them so at the cost of what is that so i can say around uh, 120 rupees i need to sell the price of this how do you calculate the average price so that i need to sell these mangoes would be what what is that amount so how much mangoes in what ratio i need to mix five uh, this 50 rupees mangoes in and in what ratio i need to mix the 100 rupees mangoes what ratio i need to do that so that is what we need to find so in this case what we do is we use the method of uh, this one what is that allegations that means what is the average price now i need to send 120 rupees okay so average price so and uh, so this is an increased price i need to sell okay 120 what is the cheapest price a uh, cheaper one 50 rupees what is the costliest price the year i am taking this one okay so now subtract them 50 uh, this one 120 minus 50 is how much so it is 70 so it is 20 therefore the ratio of ratio of so your costlier by this one what is that so i can say ratio of cheaper by costly item will be equal to what so this one what is that 20 by 70 that is in the ratio 2 is to 7 ratio i need to mix them so that i can spend at i can uh, sell them at so 120 rupees i know right now you will be confused what is happening from where we took these things and everything i am saying that this is the cheapest price this is what so your uh the this one but here i took more than average price increased price so that's the reason we have this but uh, so the same thing if we take the average price lesser than the costly of one so for example the same thing 50 rupees mangoes then 100 rupees mangoes i need to mix them and sell so that my price is 90 so what you will be having 50 is the cheapest price highest price here is what 100 rupees but i need to sell them at so 90 rupees so therefore you take like this that means what so average minus cheap price so highest minus average price so this is 90 minus 50 is what 40 and highest minus uh, this one is what 100 minus 90 so it is so 10 so therefore what we are going to get so the quantity of cheaper divided by costlier will be in the ratio so this uh, what is that the 10 by 40 okay that is they have to be in 1 by 4 ratio in what ratio we need to have so they should be in 1 by ratio that means what so i'll again what is that give the generic form of this equation 
what is that means always so whenever you get something like that so you will be having two prices one lower price we call it as cheaper price okay and the another one is dearer price dearer price in the sense what the price that is costly okay that is is the the cost price okay and between them we'll be having average price if we want to combine the we need to mix these both in such a way that we can get some average price that can be greater or that can be less than your dearer price okay so these things we have here now you need to find so in what ratio this cheaper a cheaper and dearer item should be mixed so that we can get this average price remember this formula average price put the average price here okay this side cheaper price then we have what is that dearer price dearer means costly okay remember now you subtract them okay so here what is that i am subtracting from average to this i'll write off this formula you people can note average price minus cheaper price okay so this gives rise to what this minus this so and then now dearer price and this one dearer price minus average price we are going to get dearer price minus average price so we got this now the same formula what we think took here so that will go like this therefore this implies quantity of quantity of cheaper priced item divide because we are finding the ratio by the ratio of the quantity of so dearer dearer priced item will be given by what so it is nothing but the dearer price minus average price dearer price minus average price divided by so cheaper sorry average price minus cheaper price okay so whenever they give so this thing so kindly please remember this allegation we'll be doing problems okay don't worry about that we'll be doing few problems on whatever concepts that we have worked why because so that you will understand how these questions comes and how you people need to solve them but this is the thing that you need to keep in mind the quantity of cheaper priced item divided by the quantity of the uh, dearer price item will be given by what dearer price minus average price divided by so uh, average minus cheaper price and you remember this picture also this picture plays crucial role so remember this whenever you get the sums like this you try to do this so that it will become easier okay now then we have one more thing for solutions only so this thing is what see uh like what is that we need to know i'll i'll just write this thing and after that i'll be explaining if there is p volume of p volume of pure liquid so we have some liquid which is pure so let's take milk okay milk is pure liquid initially initially we have pure liquid and in each operation each operation so q volume q volume is taken out is taken out and see if we have 10 kg of 10 liters of milk every uh, this one what is that modification i am taking 2 2 liters of milk there okay i am 2 2 i am taking 2 2 liters of milk 
but when i'm taking 2 liters of milk i'm adding 2 liters of water so that the mass should be same that means we need to have those 10 liters only but what i am doing i am taking out the milk 2 liters and i am adding on the water there okay so then what is that they are saying what is the concentrate concentration of the milk in the in that mixture that means if you want to find out what is the percentage of milk because we are taking out the milk okay and we are adding on the water that means the concentration will come down so when the concentration comes down we need to identify what is in such operations when such operations happens what is the concentration of the pure liquid present in that mixture so in that case what you will do you need to follow this problem or this formula you people follow what is that is taken out and replaced it is replaced by q volume of q volume of water that means pure liquid they are taking out and they are adding water there okay then at the end of end of such n such operation n times we are doing this n such operations operations the concentration the concentration k of the liquid liquid in the solution of the pure liquid pure liquid in the solution is given by is given by p minus q divided by p whole times n is equals to k what was the total solution minus how much amount we are taking all the time n n in the sense how many times we did this okay for example 10 liters milk we have 2 liters milk i am taking at one operation and 2 liters water i am adding on so now like this i will do three times okay so now what uh, what percentage of milk will be there what is the concentration of the milk let us try to find out so 10 liters was the mass in that 2 liters i was taking divided by 2 10 raised to the power of 3 now this becomes what 8 by 10 whole times 8 by 10 because it is raised to the power of 3 na so 8 by 10 into so 8 by 10 here what happens so to forza to pisa forza pisa forza pisa so 16 64 by 125 okay so now you can take it 125 0.0 so 125 how many times it will go so almost 2 or uh, 2 times 250 uh, so four times um, uh, this one 500 so five times 500 five times we are going to get so 5 is 25 to remainder so 5 to the 10 so it's around 0.5 percent into 100 you take that means so 50 percent of the solution is there what it is you need to multiply into 100 here whatever value you get you multiply into 100 you will be seeing that so it will be what 50 percent of the solution will be there that means only 50 percent of the milk that means in this you will come to know that so uh, in 10 liters we have only 5 liters of milk and rest of the 5 liters will be water okay so this is the thing basically we have which you people need to understand here okay so we'll be doing problems but before that let me also talk about our uh, this one what is that means and modes and medians okay so average 
But when we take it in statistical form, arithmetic mean we have. Okay. So this arithmetic mean, we know sum of all the items divided by this one. So the mean is given by x dash is equals to x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus like this x to the power n divided by n, which is nothing but sigma of, so we write sigma of x, I don't get confused with all these terminologies. It's nothing but sum of the things. So we are saying sum of the things divided by sum of the terms here, okay? The number of the terms here. So this is the normal arithmetic mean. But for some observations, okay, for some observations with different frequencies, how do you calculate? So your mean, we have three uh, methods or three different uh, methods of calculating the thing. What is that? One is direct method to calculate mean. I'm talking, see, three ways you people can calculate the mean. One is direct method. So here what happens here again x1, x2, x3. So till xn are the terms. So observations. So and the frequencies here are not just these things. We have frequencies also. Frequencies that means they may be more than one time present. F1, F2, F3. So these are the n number of frequencies. If frequencies and the number of items, I mean, they give the items, then what is the mean by the direct method is given by sigma times sigma times. So Fn into Xn, Fi basically. Fi into, that means you need to take F1 into X1 plus F2 into X2 plus F3 into X3 like this. It should go. So sigma of, so Fi into Xi where I is equals to 1 and we have n number of terms divided by sigma of, so Fi. That means sigma of Fi in the sense sum of all these things. It is something like this. F1 into x1 plus f2 into x2 plus f3 into x3 so it goes on till f1 into x and divided by so f1 plus f2 plus f3 so till so fn okay so this is the what is that i can say direct method when we have the class intervals so given here now so when these things, when, when you see that F1 into X1 is too, too very big, so what we use, so to make the calculation simple, so we'll be using assumed mean method. Assumed mean method. And what do we mean by assumed mean method? We are taking one mean, means we are assuming the mean and then we are calculating it. Okay. So now this assumed mean method, the mean is given by X mean is equals to A is that assumed mean into sigma of Fi into Di divided by sigma of Fi. Okay. This is the thing. I'll say what is this. So A is assumed mean. Whereas, so what is this? Di is what? So Di is nothing but. So whatever Xi minus average we get. So that one. So that you need to multiply with your frequency that is given here okay so this is the assumed mean method remember this formula remember what they are so di you should remember what is this di so see you will be having you will be putting x values so frequency one more you people add on so di uh, sorry uh, this one so di is equals to xi minus assumed value after this you need to add on with f into di so this is the thing and sum it up divided by sum of the frequency gives you this see no need of doing so much big calculations but when they give what is this so you need to understand them okay so the next mean 
so that we are going to have here is what by using step deviation this is when when you see that when these things could be uh, divided easily by the range so the, and if they are sounding to be big numbers so then to reduce the calculations process what we do we try to use the step deviation method so and what is the step deviation method means it is very very simple again so this method from this method so mean is given by sigma times fi into mu mu this is mu i divided by sigma of fi this is average this one assumed value plus sigma of fi into mi let me erase and write this one what we have so mean is equals to a plus sigma of fi into mu i divided by so sigma of fi now you will be thinking what is this mu and into h h is nothing but the range here so but what is this mu mu is nothing but so we can say that so mu is given by xi minus a okay so xi minus a divided by h so this is our uh, this one what is that mu and what is this h the range or the class interval width okay so this is what we basically have here so xi minus a by h gives us mu i one more column see here what is that if you see from this you found this and now mu i will be equal to what xi minus i by h this is the thing that you need to find it out okay so this is these are the see we have first of all different methods also in that we see that the average is also given by that means the means could be found by three different methods one is direct method so another one is step deviation method and the assumed mean method so we'll be taking up here okay the next thing let me talk about is mode mode is what the mode is nothing but so it can be defined as the term so that basically uh, exist more number of time that means that particular item will be existing so uh, more okay it will be uh, more in the frequency okay if the statistics is countable you can say the one which is repeatedly occurring the one interval that is repeatedly occurring the one value that is repeatedly occurring so we can take that as the mode for example if i take 2 3 4 4 6 Six, 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 and six, seven, and nine. What is the mode here? From the observation only, you can see that six is presented more times than this one. So therefore, six is more. But they won't give so simple. They give the things on grouped data. That means you people need to find mode on the group data. or i can say group data in the sense what so uh, a big statistics will be given and on that you people need to find so at that time what mode is given by l plus here you need to f1 minus fo divided by 2 times f1 minus f4 minus f2 so into the range here so what is this l so l is nothing but lower class lower limit lower limit of the modal class what is this lower limit of modal class see when they give the class intervals not every class intervals will be taking will be having only one class interval which comes as a modal class 
So that is what is that modal class. So its lower limit is called the, as the lower. That means its lowest value. Its lowest value is the lower limit. And here h is what? The range. Range of the class interval. Range of the class interval. What is this f1? f1 is nothing but that frequency of the modal class. What is this f1? So it is nothing but it is the frequency of modal class. Now, f0 is what? So frequency of the preceding uh, modal cla uh, preceding class of the modal class. That means one previous class, whatever we'll have, even that will be having the frequency that is f4. So f4 is what? Frequency of frequency of the class preceding preceding the modal class. Now F2 is what? After modal class. Frequency of the class after modal class. That is our F2. Okay. Mode can be less, equal, or more than the mean. That means, remember one thing. Mode can be greater, can be lesser, can be equal to what? Mean here. Okay. So, mode can be greater, lesser, or equal to mean. This is what we basically have. And also, you remember one thing. So, median is equal to. Let us talk about median. What is median? Median is the midmost term. Midmost term in the given. If we have odd number of terms, then we can say middle term. If we have even terms, so how do you find the median? It is nothing but so you will be taking the average of the middle two terms middle two terms divided by two. So that is the midterm that we are going to give. So that means what? So in other way around, if we have number of terms odd, then the median is given by n plus one by two observation. That means if I have Five terms, five plus one by two, six by two. That is third term is my midterm. Okay, what is this? We'll be taking third term, whatever the third term is there. So that is the median, the midmost thing. But if we have even number of terms, so what we need to do? So say five terms I have, five by two plus five by two plus one divided by 2. So this becomes what? So 5 by 2, 5 by 2, 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 1. So divided by 2, which is nothing but 5 plus 1, 6, 6 by 2. So that is 3 is the median. Okay. So this is how we people need to practice. And tomorrow we are going to do problems on these things. Okay. So now, Any doubts, guys, you people had? Yes, Kashish, when we add, so yes, the average will be increased by same value. Okay, so no doubts, fine, guys. Tomorrow we'll meet you uh, and we'll work on whatever we discussed. So we'll be working on those problems based on GRE, okay? All right. Bye, guys. Take care. Thank you, ma'am. Also, guys, please don't forget to use the coupon code provided to you for, uh, to upgrade from, base, uh, from basic to bronze for free. Thank you. Also, if you have any doubt related to the Ubergrad website, you may ask now. Otherwise, I'll be ending the session.